I want to preach to you today on your first night in hell. What can you expect? What will it be like? There are three things that are going to happen to everybody listening to me. Number one, you're going to die. Hebrews chapter 7 said, It is appointed unto man once to die, and after death then comes the judgment. So you're going to die. Number two, you're going to face the judgment. And number three, if you have been born again and received Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will immediately, instantly go to heaven. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Instantly, immediately, you go to heaven. But if you have not received Jesus Christ, if He is not Lord of your life, if you're living a life of sin, then you will immediately, instantly go to a place, a real place, that is called hell. I believe in hell because God's Word teaches there is a hell. Every time that the Bible mentions heaven, hell is mentioned ten times. It's mentioned ten times more hell is than heaven. And I am speaking to some people today who will go to hell. There is a good chance that you will never get it right. Jesus Christ Himself taught in the parables lessons that I'm going to share with you right now that prove that I'm preaching to people who absolutely under the sound of my voice will go to heaven. Jesus said that it would be like the wheat and the tare that grow up together. And until the time of the harvest, the harvest can be death or it can be rapture. And He said then the wheat will be gathered. And then there will come a separation. The wheat will be put up in a barn, but the tear will be thrown into unquenchable fire. And Jesus said, this is what it will be like. All together we grow up, but one day there's going to come a separation. And those who are saved will go to heaven, and those who are lost will be cast into unquenchable fire. Jesus was the one who taught how that the kingdom of heaven is like a great net and it's cast out and it brings in all kinds of fish and he said the good fish are separated and kept but the bad fish are disregarded and thrown away and he said this is how it will be in the judgment he said that three out of four people would hear the word of God but would not become productive he said in the seed sowing parable that the sower sowed the seed which was the word of God but three out of four people did not receive the message of the Word of God. They did not receive the message of a Savior who carried a cross and bled and died and rose again. Three out of four had stony, thorny, cold hearts and would not respond. Only one had good ground that received the seed and produced a hundredfold. And he said, this is a type of people who are exposed to the gospel. They'll hear it, but the seed will fall on their heart but find no place where it takes root and produces the fruit of eternal life. It was Jesus who taught the ten virgins but only five of them were ready when the bridegroom came. Five of them had their lamps burning. Five of them had the oil of the Holy Spirit. Five of them were living ready for the coming. And five who said they wanted to go somehow their hearts were not ready. This was the teaching of Jesus. I'm preaching to people right now that will go to hell. Men and women who in opportune times like these, they just fail to live for God. How much more will the enemy see to it that you miss? If you can come to a church like this, it would be better to go to hell from a bar or go to hell from some hell hole out there. Don't go to hell from a spirit-filled church like this because the truth is hell will be even worse for you. I'm talking to people who are going to spend their first night in hell. What is it going to be like? What can you expect when you get there? What will it feel like? How will you be transported? Many times when, when you buy a cruise or plan a vacation trip, it will be all inclusive. The transportation will be included. If it's a cruise or if it's an airline tickets or a limousine or um, a shuttle that picks you up and takes you to the airport, it's all inclusive. 
Well, I want to tell you, your first night in hell, you will first be escorted by angels. The Bible talks about in the book of Luke 16, how that Lazarus was a poor man and he died and the angels carried him to heaven. But it also teaches in the scripture that there was a rich man who died and instantly he lifted up his eyes in hell. And the scripture tells the story of the man who went to the wedding on another occasion. And Jesus told this parable. And he said that the master of the wedding noticed a man at the wedding. And he was not in right clothing. He had not prepared himself. He had not washed. He had not dressed. He was inappropriate at a beautiful wedding. And the master of the feast said to the servants, Take him and bind him and cast him out where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then Jesus said, I tell you, this is how it will be for those who are not ready ready for the coming or ready to die and they have not prepared themselves and they don't have their wedding garments on and they're not clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ they will be cast that's the word that's used cast out from the presence of God into darkness into weeping into gnashing of teeth into torment into fire into flames into pain it's no wonder that the Bible said that the angels rejoice over one soul, one sinner that is saved. Why do they rejoice when one sinner gets saved? Why do they become exuberant when one sinner gets saved? Because they are the ones that escort so many. They have seen the horrors of hell. They have seen and cast away from the presence of God forever and forever souls that have no hope. They've been there. They've seen the flames. And